in the past, we've graphed a lot of things before, right? I want to remind you of a couple of the things that you've graphed recently. If I asked you to graph something like this, here we go. We got equations like this. Sometimes we wrote equations like this out of these variation or these proportion problems. Do you remember that? So this is some quantity that's equal to double some other quantity, okay? Number of people in the room, sorry, no, other way around. Number of people in the room, number of eyes in the room. That makes sense, doesn't it? 30 people in the room, multiply by two, 60 eyes in the room, okay? So this is a variation relationship. We also saw things like this. This is also variation, but it's another kind. Do you remember what kind it was? It had a special name, it started with an I. Inverse, right? Inverse uh, variation. So this is not when two numbers get bigger together. It's when one number gets bigger and the other gets smaller. Okay. Now you've got, um, you've got Desmos here to help you work out what these look like. And you've, we've seen pictures of these before. So go ahead, put your cursor up in the top left-hand corner, and go ahead and type in the first one. Let me turn off my internet because I know what will happen if I don't. You were all too slow today. There we go. Okay. There's... <coughs> Excuse me. There's y equals 2x. It's just a straight line, so we've seen this before. And if at the same time I also draw, you can just press enter, y equals 2 divided by x, you get this, which is kind of interesting. Okay. <coughs> so think about what these red and blue lines mean. The red line is direct variation. One quantity goes up, the other quantity also goes up. Right? Whereas the blue line is an inverse variation or inverse proportion. As you can see, when I go up on this, the blue gets closer to this side. So this number increases, this number decreases. Okay? Or in the same way, as this number increases, this number decreases. I get lower and lower and lower as time goes on. Okay? Um, so for instance, this might be like the example I gave before, number of people in the room, and this is how much donut we get to eat per person. Okay, it gets smaller and smaller as we share it out, assuming you guys are willing to share. So these are the pictures, these are what we're familiar with. What I want us to contemplate or consider is this guy. I'm going to put one more too, but I'm going to put him in an unusual spot. I'm going to put it there. Now, don't say anything, but I want you to raise your hand if you know what kind of shape we're going to get out of there. Hands up straight. I don't expect everyone to put their hands up. I just want to see who would put their hands up. Uh, a small number. Okay, hands down. Hands down. Okay. Here's how we're going to work this out, right? This is going to require a tiny bit of um, legwork here. Shh. You're 10. But Desmos is going to do most of the legwork for us. Okay? So the first thing I want to do is let's switch off these graphs. We don't need them. So what you do is you, um, you click on the colored bits on the left-hand side, and your graphs will disappear. They're still there, but they're just hidden. Okay? Now here's what we're going to do. I want to get some coordinates out of this. Okay? So for instance, if I said when x equals something, y equals something else. And so we're going to draw a little table of values here. Can you draw this underneath where you've got this for me as well? So I'm going to try and look at an x value and compare it to a y value. Let's start with an easy one. If x is 0, what's y equal to? Yeah, because y is equal to 0 squared. So this is just 0. When x is equal to 1, what's y equal to? 1, because 1 squared is 1. But now when we have a look further, the numbers start to get more interesting. When x is 2, x squared will be 4. And 3 gives me... Okay, now Desmos can help us graph this. Okay? What we're going to do is, and I haven't done this in a little while, so I might have to remember some of this stuff. Do you guys have that little plus icon in the top left-hand corner? Do you have that? Go ahead and click on it. Do you have the same options I have? I've got expression, note, table, folder, image. Do you have those? Yeah, okay. Can you click on table for me? Do you have that? You see what I've got? 
Okay, maybe your color is different, it doesn't matter, okay? So you can see what they've created is an X and a Y table, just like we have an X and a Y table. So what I want you to do is pop the numbers we've got into here, zero and zero. Then if you just press enter, I think it'll go down to the next row and you can add all of these in. Okay, now as you've punched them in, if you look at your graph, you will see something's happening. That set of graph, uh, set of values rather, now appears as coordinates. Do you, see, do you have them as well? Do you have them appearing on your screen? Okay, thumbs up. So what you've done, just like when we were looking at, do you remember you guys, the people who remember it were on their computers and we were trying to like plot the guy, the parachute, the cannon man. Do you remember that? He went up, then he went down. And you would put some points on them and then you try and join them up. Okay. So I want you to have a look at this graph. You've got dots here. What kind of shape would join up all of these dots? Can you sort of draw it with your finger? You sort of see it, right? Okay, so now here's what we're going to do. We could have done this right at the beginning, but now we're going to create this shape. Go ahead, go to a new line, and type in y equals x, and in fact, you'll see probably a squared button right there. Do you have that? Have you got that? Go ahead and punch it in. Okay. So the heading you can make is the name of this shape, which is parabolas. This is a parabola. Now, can I get a show of hands? Whose screen looks like this? Hands up straight? Yeah? Okay, hands down. What does yours look like if it doesn't? Because a few people didn't have their hands up. Yeah? Actually, can you do me a, do it one better? Can you turn your screens around? I just want to see all your graphs. Turn around. Yep. Cool. Looking good, looking good. Okay. You haven't finished yet. Well, what have you done? You're interesting. Those look great. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. You can turn them back around to yourselves. Johnny, can you do me a favor before I get there? Can you have a look at Ugly uh, Drone work out what he's done? I'll come to you in a minute. Oh, I think I know what you've done. I think you've switched these around. I think you have these backwards, Agni. I think you have your X's and your Y's and your Y's and your X's. I think that's what you've done. Is that what you've done? I think that's what you, I think you have these this way. Shh. Okay. Now put your pens down for a moment. And in fact, just um, leave your laptop ajar, but just shut it for a second. I want us to look at this shape and note a few things about it, and we'll write these down together. Okay. For starters, let's compare it to these guys. So, uh, this blue shape is called a hyperbola. It ends the same, but starts different. Um, clearly, these are different, but they share some things. They share some things in common. Can someone, anyone tell me something that's common between the black and the blue graph? Anything at all, Brian? Okay, number one, they're both curved, and that's very, very important. Okay? Someone tell me something else that's in common between them. Anyone? Yeah, go ahead, Blush. Say that again. Okay, they're both um, infinite, right? There's no point at which they stop. That's also very important. Ryan, you see something else? They both go like straighter towards the like when you get out of it. They both go straighter when they what? How did you end that again? What was when they go out. What? So you're talking about like that way? Is that what you mean? Yeah, but like the straight line is curve like this at the bottom. Okay, so this is helpful. So for example, and um, I'll get you to do this in a second, but just watch it now. If I zoom in on this section here. Just have a look at that right now. Now you know where this graph comes from, you know what the rest of the picture looks like. But if you didn't, doesn't that kind of look like a straight line? Do you notice that? If you go in far enough, it looks like a straight line. And both of them do this. You can do the same thing with the blue line. That looks like a straight line too, doesn't it? If you zoom in far enough or you go to the right spot. Okay. Does anyone else see anything uh, that, I haven't, that hasn't been mentioned? Kate? Okay, they're both, and this is a really key idea, I was wondering who would get to this one. They're both symmetrical in at least one way. So, can you describe to me in what way is um, the blue graph, how is that symmetrical? How would you describe its symmetry? Millie, you've got hands, can you use some words? What words would you use? That way. That way. Okay, so if we put in, in fact I will put in, y equals minus x. There we go. If you put in that red line, and you just, just turn your head a little bit, just turn your head. You can see the blue line is symmetrical about that. It's reflected across. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. Now, the y equals x squared line isn't symmetrical around this line. It's symmetrical around another line. What line is it? I'll give you a tip. The line's already on there. 
Isn't it? Yeah, very good. It's the y axis. You can see you just sort of flip this side over here. Now, think about that for a second. Why is that? We only did positive numbers. We only did positive numbers, right? But do you notice if you had put in, say, negative 1 instead of 1, if x were negative 1, what would y be equal to? It would still be 1. If x were negative 2, what would y be equal to? It would still be 4. Why, why aren't there negatives there? Because it gets doubled. It gets squared, right? The, the number of negative signs doubles and they cancel each other out. 